The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 4, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Learners should be able to use a range of figurative language such as idiom, idiomatic expressions and proverbs with developing appropriateness. This lesson also addresses learning outcome 2, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should also be able to recognize how word choices, imagery and sound devices affect mood, meaning and theme. Hi there. In our previous lessons, we learned about figures of speech that involve comparisons, and you should be able to identify similes, metaphors, and personification. In this lesson, we will look at how the sound of words enhances language. Now, I'm sure that you have seen words like these before. Zoom, kapow, splat, kiss, buzz, sploosh, and clatter. What do these words have in common? All of these words have interesting sounds. When you say them out loud, they actually sound like what they are meant to represent. These are the types of words that we will focus on today. So, in today's lesson, we are going to look at figures of speech that involve sound devices. But what is a sound device? Sound devices are words which appeal to our sense of sound. Sounds and comparisons are both ways of enhancing our understanding and creating a deeper and richer text because they make it easier for us to imagine things. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand and identify alliteration, assonance and onomatopoeia. From our previous lessons, you will know that it is important to use the correct terms. Now, I know these terms sound confusing and difficult to you right now, but you will soon be comfortable and use them quite easily. Now, let's look at our first sound device for today, alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. In order to understand this definition, we need to check that we know what we mean by consonant sounds. A consonant is any letter of the alphabet which is not a vowel. In our definition of alliteration, don't overlook the bit about consonant sounds. This is an important part of the definition because alliteration is a figure of speech which deals with the sound of words. To consolidate the idea of alliteration, I think we should look at a few examples. Remember, we are looking for consonant sounds that are repeated at the beginning of words that are closely connected. Once we have identified them, we need to decide whether they were used effectively. Often, alliteration is used to emphasize the expression of movement. Slowly, slyly, the snake slid stealthily towards its prey. The easiest way to identify alliteration is by saying the words out loud. Now, you cannot always do this, so it's important that you can imagine what the words sound like. Now, remember, we are dealing with sound and not the spelling. Let's look at our example again. Slowly, slyly, the snake slid stealthily towards its prey. This is an obvious example of alliteration, and you can see that the S sound has been repeated at the beginning of most of the words in this sentence. Why do you think the S sound is repeated in this sentence? Is it a harsh or a soft sound? Now let's look at the sentence again. What idea did the author try to convey? The meaning of the sentence is that the snake is secretly approaching its prey. It is rather menacing and dangerous. A soft S sound has been employed to enhance the atmosphere of tension and fear. 
The softness of the sound suggests that this is a quiet movement by the snake and his victim has no idea of the approaching danger. Are you getting an idea of how sound devices are used in figurative language? I think we should look at another example of alliteration. This is an extract from the poem Preludes by T.S. Eliot. The showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots. First of all, can you pick out the alliteration in these lines? You need to find a consonant sound which has been repeated in the words which are close to each other and then decide whether the use of the figure of speech was effective. I'm sure that you were able to identify the B sound as being repeated. Now let's look at the meaning within the context of the lines. The repetition of the B sound emphasizes the words beat, broken and blinds. This sets an ominous tone. The explosive B also suggests the sound made by falling rain. Alliteration is the sound device which involves the repetition of a consonant sound in words which are close to one another. This adds to the impact of the writer's message. Now that you have done so well with alliteration, let's move on to our next sound device, assonance. Assonance is the opposite of alliteration. Assonance is the repetition of a vowel sound to create a particular effect. The vowel sound must be in words which are close to one another. Remember that vowels are the letters A, E, I, O and U. Assonance occurs when either short or long vowel sounds are repeated. Short vowel sounds are those such as the short A sound in cat. Long vowel sounds are those such as the long A in tail. It is important to be able to hear the difference between a long vowel sound and a short vowel sound as this affects the pace of the writing. Look at this example. He clasps the crag with crooked hands. First we need to identify the assonance in this sentence. Which vowel sound has been repeated? You should be able to see that the a sound appears in the words crag and hands. This sound is short and so adds to the urgency of the situation. Short vowel sounds may create a mood of suspense, excitement, thrill or joy. The next example I have for you is quite different and here you will see how the long vowel sound slows down the pace of the sentence. This usually creates a more somber or serious mood. So strode he back slowly to the wounded king. It must be obvious by now that the assonance in this sentence is the long O sound. This sound device reinforces the serious and sad meaning of the sentence. It is important to remember that alliteration and assonance are examples of figurative language. When commenting on a writer's use of figures of speech, you must be able to justify why you think it is effective in the context. Alliteration and assonance are related. In other words, they work in the same way. The only difference is that assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds, whereas alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds. They are equally important in conveying a writer's intention. Now we are going to have some fun with the most quirky member of the figures of speech family. The most challenging part of this sound device is learning how to spell it. It derives from a Greek word. Let's take a look at it. This word is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia uses words that imitate real life sounds. The sound effects add to the impact of the words. The best place to see onomatopoeia in action is in comic books. We see, usually in bold letters, words like splat and kapow when the main character punches the baddie. These words are used to reinforce the sound that the actual blows would make. Now let's look at an example of onomatopoeia in a poem. 
a quarter in and pull the knob. Clackety crash, clackety crash. Pull the lever, hope it doesn't stick. Clackety, clackety, clackety click. The title of this poem is Coin Machine. And I would like to point out that a quarter is the American 25 cent piece. Now the words clackety crash are quite harsh and jarring and they echo the sound that the coins would make as they are dropped into the machine. The words clackety 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 give the reader the impression that the money continues to fall into the machine but the click is rather final and we realize that the coins are stuck. Here is a poem that contains a number of different figures of speech. As practice, let's try and identify them. The helicopter bee flies down, his motor to a midget drone. First of all, a bee is described as a helicopter bee. What figure of speech has been used here? The bee is not really a helicopter, but is being compared to one. The words like and as have not been used. So this is an example of a metaphor. As we know, a bee does not have a motor, but it continues the idea of the bee being a helicopter. So this is an extended metaphor. The word drone refers to the sound made by the bee and certainly echoes the actual noise made by the bee when it flies. So it is an example of onomatopoeia. Drone also means a male honeybee. So the word has a dual purpose in the poem. Understanding the function of each part of speech is essential if you are going to benefit from their inclusion in writing. Check your ability to spot similes, metaphors and examples of personification, alliteration, assonance or onomatopoeia by testing yourself and friends. As with all aspects of English, learning off by heart will not help you to be able to apply your skills in various situations. When you learnt about figures of speech dealing with comparisons, you were asked to write down examples of figurative language from newspaper headlines, billboards, song titles and advertisements. Look at these again. Find examples of alliteration and assonance in the media. For example, in advertisements, newspaper headlines or on billboards. Don't forget that the best way to remember this work is to apply it whenever you can. Goodbye.